Why do you keep wearing a scruffy old red jacket? That seems to be the question of the day. Well, the reason I wear this scruffy old red jacket, which is stained and I don't know what else, got wood filler on it, you know, all kinds of, is because sawdust doesn't stick to it. That's why I wear it. And it, it's warm without being heavy. I've had this scruffy old red jacket with a hole in the pocket for, uh, well, I don't know, since 1995. I got it at a golf tournament. Not because I won the tournament. <laughs> I think this was the booby prize. But uh, that's where I got it. You know, so it's a logo jacket. Sponsor was 7-Up, you know. So that's why I wear it. Now, what am I doing today? Well, let's look. I'm turning a bowl, get the camera out here where you can kind of see what's going on. I'm turning a bowl, only this time it's not ingrain. Ingrain would mean I'd be making the hole here. Which to me always seemed like the natural way to do things. But instead, I'll be making the hole, well actually on this side, this will be the bottom of the bowl, and this will be the top of the bowl with the hole in it with the cutout in it. And I had this thing on there using, if I can get it out of here, I'll show you. Using this to hold the end of it, on the motor end. And the darn thing, here I'll get up there where you can see it. For some reason or another, it wouldn't hold this well enough and it kept flying off. I wished I had a movie of it flying off because that's a spectacular, awesome, dangerous event. Flew off twice and I gave up and so now I've got this thing screwed on the other side. It can't come off. All right, so I'm going to get to turning here. I'll be making a flat spot with a tenon on this side so that I can turn it over and mount it and cut the hole out. But I'll be making a flat spot, rounding the edges and coming up this way. You know, shaping it like a bowl otherwise. So, let's get some tools and let's get started. I'll be using a, in fact I'll be using this right here. It's a bowl gouge, and I'll be using that to turn it. So let me get my face mask and shield on. I really don't like wearing either one, but for safety reasons and protect my lungs, I'm going to. Well, I think that looks about right. I'll get her to cranking. Learn as slow as I can make it. About 500 RPM. get some balance in it as soon as it gets more balance I can speed it up it'll cut better good and tight
this is my first bowl I've turned this way. Remember my last video, I showed you end grain bowl where I turned out this end. And supposedly that's a hard bowl to turn because of the way the fibers of the, the wood go. They're like little straws sticking up this way. But, uh, you know, I didn't know any better. <laughs> and I'm not alone. A lot of people turn in, turn bowls on end grain. It's just not the preferred way to do it. It's supposed to be easier this way. I don't know how it's easier. But, uh, anyway, well, that's what I'm doing. And I'm going to continue to do it. And after I get the bottom shaped, well, I'll get back to you and show you what it's like. Okay, well, you can see I'm starting to get the, the bottom kind of shaped up there getting it rounded off. Now I'm going to turn the ends a little bit, bring this on around. I'm going to be using a different tool for that. I'll be using this tool. This has a, a carbide square tip on the end. And I'll have to move my banjo. This, is, this thing's called a banjo. This is a tool rest. This down here is a banjo. Not sure why they call it a banjo, but that's what they call it. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Wow. Doesn't look like that. Or not supposed to look like that. Got to bring my tool rest out more. Okay, see the tool rest on the other tools, you want to get the, on this type of tool, you want to get the tool rest as close to the wood as possible, so there's no gap here, so it doesn't pull a tool like that. On this tool, see it has a flat spot, and that flat spot down here is supposed to rest on the tool rest. So you got to pull it a lot further out. You don't want it laying on this, it'll roll. You want it on that flat spot. So, let's try it again. I'm trying to come around as soon as I get these flat spots as soon as I get these flat spots rounded off it'll be a lot easier to turn this is not the easiest stuff in the world to turn this Leland Cypress but anyway I need to keep bringing this up keep turning that off so I'm gonna turn the camera off and keep doing this this will take a while this is a slow process not something that happens in just a couple of minutes. So, turn the camera off and I'll get back to you when I get those ends rounded up and we can crank it up a little bit, get a little more speed out of it. Well, as you can see, let me get my camera adjusted here, get it down close. It's starting to round off. I've sped it up to about 600 RPM. And uh, I still gotta take some of this bark off. Keep rounding it up this way. But it's a lot easier to turn. I'm starting to develop my tenon. It's a lot easier to turn. Let 
but it's still, I don't think I want this bark on there. I need to get up along into here. Leave some of it so I can have a, a natural edge, but uh, it's got to be rounded off. So I'll keep working. I'll show you what it looks like turning at a faster speed. I'm using my bowl gouge again. You get my cool rest up here a little closer. see the shape of the bowl and I'm going to leave that little bit of bark on top for a live edge and then this here is my tenon I'll, I got to take this off but this is my tenon so it'll fit in my other chuck and I'll turn it around and mount it over on this side and then make the hole in the bowl so that's where I'm at that's what I'm trying to do but it looks pretty good I got to make this a little smaller. I made myself kind of a gauge here where I can stick it down on that and if it don't slide over it, which is not quite sliding over it yet. See? Well, I know that that tenon is not small enough to fit in my chuck. So I got a little more work to do. I'll get her chucked up and then I'll show you what that looks like. Well, there's a crack in the wood. And I'm going to fill that with CA glue and then take some of this sawdust and fill the crack. So I'll be doing that. Not much to see. You just take the CA glue, put it in the crack. Now here, I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, fill that up. I think I'll put a little on this knot here too. And take some sawdust and just rub it in the crack. Now, if you do get that on your fingers, which I just got on my fingers, I can feel it, uh, acetone will take it off. The thing you don't want to do, if you get it on your fingers, is put your fingers together, because if you do, they're stuck. Well, that's what you do. And then, to get it sealed up, you take what's called accelerator. Accelerator. Just spray it on there, and that makes it dry instantly. Here's a couple other tear outs here. I think I'll fill those too. Now, for this rough stuff in the grain, I'd have to sand forever. I'm going to get some wood filler and fill that. This is Robert's 
wood laminate and vinyl putty and I use this because it comes in multiple colors and you can even mix your colors to get a different shade. See, that color almost matches perfectly. And that's just the grain and I tell you I'd have to cut a lot more off to get that to to disappear. And I don't want to do that. And it may not. It may keep tearing out. Well, I don't think I can do any more damage. Now the idea is to make it really slick and smooth. All right, kids, what's next is I got to clean up this mess. Man, there's sawdust. Look at that stuff. There's sawdust everywhere. Shavings, sawdust, whatever you count. See now, this red jacket, see that stuff just brushes right off. Most of it's already fallen off. Anyway, I'm going to clean up, let that dry overnight. And then tomorrow we'll uh, get back to it. We'll turn that sucker around and we'll uh, start making a bowl out of it. Until then, I'll catch you tomorrow. I'm stopping because there's nothing more boring than a long video. And really, what you want to see on a Turner's video is what it looked like before you started. Just a quick, what are you doing from each step to each step to next step to next step. You know, you got the idea. And then you want to see what it looks like at the final end. Other than that, what else is there to see? The rest of it is just all boring, boring, boring. So now I'm just going to show you what my next steps were and what the final product looks like. All right. Well, I'm back. I finished the little bowl. I didn't show you how I finished it. I just going to talk you through it. I didn't want to waste your time with all the gouging and the cutting and the messing around and the drilling and everything, the finishing, because that's kind of boring just to sit there and watch that. But I can tell you what I did, which I think will make it easier for you and a whole lot easier for me, and you'll know what I did anyway. All right. So I had the bowl over here on the lathe like that. And I had it mounted and I turned a tenon on this end. I think I showed you that the last, when we were last talking. Well, after I had that, I got the tenon on. I took it over here to the drill press and I needed to start a hole in the bowl. I couldn't do it on my drill or on my lathe because the lathe is broken. I'll show you what's wrong. So I use this Forstner bit, which I really like. It's a uh, carbide bit, it has carbide cutters on it. And I used a Forstner bit because it drills a, a flat hole in the bottom. So I drilled a flat hole in the bottom, uh, three and a quarter inches deep. Okay. Then I took it back over here and mounted it on the lathe. You're getting a tour of the shop. And I mounted it like this in the chuck. I mounted the tenon in the chuck. Okay, and then what you do is you take your gouges and you grind out that hole. That's what you do. Then after I got that done, I turned it around and used a pressure fit and I cut the tenon off. Okay, and then all it was is a matter of refinishing it. I got about, I don't know, I guess seven, eight coats of shellac on it. And uh, then I English polished it, which gives it a really nice shine. And so this is my first bowl that wasn't an ingrain bowl. It has a little live edge still on the top. And it's about, uh, oh, I'd say five inches wide at the widest place and about four, four and a half inches high. And I don't know what we're going to use it for. Uh, I guess to put junk in. We've got plenty of that to do. 
that's what the little bowl looks like. And I think it turned out pretty well. That's the, like I said, that's the first one I've turned that wasn't in grain. I've only turned one of the bowl and that one was in grain. That was uh, in the last video. Okay, what's wrong with my lathe was there's a big long screw in here and it's used to you crank this crank and that forces this tailstock that's what they call this end here it forces this tailstock into the wood and then you lock her down and then it holds a piece of wood in your lathe well you also use that to drill with and you'd put that forstner bit on an extension and you put the extension in the tailstock and then you you crank moving the drill into the piece so it just goes right in there well what happened was the drill locked up in the stock and it turned the screw in here and it turned it all the way out and ruined the threads so now I've only got about oh about an inch of throw well if I was gonna drill a hole like in a piece like this why well, I could drill an inch then I'd have to reset the thing and drill another inch back it up and reset and drill you know keep going like that whereas before I could drill about uh, eh, almost four and a half five inches something like that but what I didn't do I didn't tighten this down and because I didn't tighten that down this was able to spin when the drill locked up and that's what ruined the threads so if you got a jet JWL1236 and I imagine a lot of the others the same way you need to tighten this screw up and there's a groove in this shaft there's a groove right there that this tightens in so then th this can't turn so when you're drilling this is not what turns it's the piece the lathe turns and that's what drills the hole so that's how I screwed it up now I got another tip for you before I go I needed something to wear when I'm turning to keep the ashes, or not ashes, but the, the sawdust and the sh all that stuff off of me. And I went over to the Goodwill store and I bought this raincoat. It's a London Fog. I didn't know they still made those. And I checked online and this raincoat is uh 120 bucks and i went to the salvation army goodwill store let me turn it around i'll put i'll put it on for you maybe maybe you can see this i'm not sure whether i can do this or not i'm sorry to be so screwed up today yeah i think you can see me but anyway i wanted a long coat to keep the sawdust off of me so I can come down here and work and not get all dirty. So I got this. It's lightweight. The lining's out of it. It's even clean. Nice and clean. And nothing sticks to it. It's waterproof. Not that I'm going to be using water down here. But nothing will stick to it. So it worked out pretty good. For $5, you can't beat it with a stick. So that's my tip for the day. If you need something, yeah, check out Salvation Army. Well, that's all I've got. I hope this all made sense. I didn't want to waste a lot of your time watching me standing over there with a piece of wood going around making sawdust. But uh, anyway, if you found this video helpful or interesting or I know you just like me. Okay, that's fine. You know, whatever. Okay. Anyway, uh, give me a thumbs up if you can. Share.